Welcome to our lecture online and now that we mastered the ability to find how to express the impedance of uh, circuits or components in circuits with complex numbers we're now going to do an example where we use a voltage source that's, uh, that's varying with time we're going to have an inductor, a resistor and a capacitor inside a series circuit we'll do a series circuit first because that's a lot easier to work with and then after that we'll do a parallel circuit for comparison so here we have an inductor, and of course an inductor does have some resistance, some internal resistance, so we have to account for that. So the impedance of the inductor will be the resistance of the internal resistance plus the reactance of the inductor portion of the inductor. And in this case we gave it 10 ohms of resistance and 50 ohms of reactance. So the way we can write that is we can say that the amplitude of the impedance is 51 ohms. I left out the ohms to keep it to make it simpler to look at at an angle of 78.7 degrees with respect to the what we call the uh, voltage source. The resistance it just has R so the impedance of the resistance is just the resistance which is 40 ohms and for the capacitor we have a reactance of 10 ohms and of course that's going to be in the negative I direction meaning 90 degrees behind the resistance. So if we're going to draw a phase diagram of that because I also want to explain to you how I got from this to this just so we remember but let me draw a little phase diagram of that so here we have our phase diagram this would be 90 degrees ahead this would be 90 degrees behind so typically the inductance is associated with this so we have a what we would call a Z sub L that would be the impedance portion um, actually let me call it like this let me go like this it would be, this would be the reactance of the inductor and the resistance of the inductor like that so we remember that was 10 ohms right here so this is 10 ohms and this is uh, equal to uh, what we call 50 ohms and so if we combine those together like a vector sum we will then get what we call the impedance of the inductor Z sub L which is simply a vector sum of these two and so when we find the magnitude of Z sub L we use like the Pythagorean theorem we take the resistance portion we squared we take the, the reactance portion squared then we add them together take the square root and we get the uh, the magnitude of the impedance so in other words the way we get to 51 is we take the square root of 10 squared plus 50 squared take the square root and that gives us 51 which is the magnitude of the impedance of the inductor and then the angle right here this angle this is the phase angle let's call it theta the way we get theta is we take theta is equal to the arctangent of the opposite side which is x sub l divided by the adjacent side which in this case would be r I'm just going to write another x here let's write r like so which is equal to the arctangent of um, x sub l which would be 50 over 10 and that gave us the angle of 78.7 degrees so that's how we find the impedance of that inductor now we still have the resistance 40 ohms which is in this direction so we have a 40 ohms resistance this is r which is equal to the z sub r so it's the same thing really and then we have the reactance of the capacitor which is down here at a minus 10 so this here would be the um, x sub c which is equal to minus 10 ohms and of course since there's no resistance portion of it it's all in the imaginary direction 90 degrees behind the impedance of the resistor or the resistance so that's how we write a phase diagram of the impedance of the reactant of the uh, inductor the impedance of the capacitor and the resistance of the resistor all right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the total impedance of the circuit now it's a series circuit so since it's a series circuit we just have to add up all the impedances so in other words the total impedance of the circuit is going to be equal to the impedance of the inductor plus the impedance of the resistor plus the impedance of the capacitor since we're adding we really don't need to put it into this format right here we can simply leave it into the what we call resistance and reactance format so we can write this as Z sub L being 10 ohms plus I times 50 ohms plus that would be the impedance of the resistance which is just 40 ohms plus the impedance of the capacitor which is going to be a minus 10 ohms so now all we have to do is add the real parts and the imaginary parts together so 10 plus 40 is 50 so it'll be 50 ohms plus a positive 50 and a minus 10 that would be plus i times 40 ohms and this here would be the total impedance of this series circuit so pretty straightforward now if we want to convert that to this format right here 
we can do that. This is equal to, and of course, again, we do the same thing before. It's like using Pythagorean theorem. If you were to graph this on a, on a diagram, let's do that real quick. So you can kind of see that. So we have a positive uh, 50 ohms of resistance, like that. That's 50 ohms. And we have a 40 ohms in the positive I direction. So that would be here. So it would be 40 ohms in this direction. And then if we combine the two, in like in a vector sum, this here would be impedance Z. And of course, to find the magnitude of that impedance, we simply take the square root of the sum of the squares of the two here. So that would be 50 squared plus 40 squared. Uh, that would be 2,500, 1,600. I better grab a calculator to get the right value for that. So 2,500 plus 1,600 equals take the square root, and that gives us 64 ohms. Okay, so this would be a, uh, an impedance of 64 ohms. And now we have to have the phase angle. That's this angle right here. So what is that angle right there? So theta equals the arc tangent of the opposite side, which is the reactance, which would be 40 divided by the adjacent side, which is the resistance, 50. And so 4 divided by 5, take the arc tangent, and that gives us 38.7 degrees. And so that means that the impedance here is 64 ohms at an angle of 38.7 degrees ahead of the voltage of the supply. All right, now, what if we want to find the current of the circuit? Well, remember Ohm's law says that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. And of course, in this case, since we have impedance, we can write it as the current is equal to the voltage divided by the impedance. So in this case, since we're dividing, we're going to use this format of the impedance. And we're going to write this in the same format for the voltage. So in this case, this would be 100 volts at a reference angle of zero degrees because everything is the phase of everything else is in comparison to the phase of the source voltage so that will be at zero degrees divided by the impedance which is 64 ohms at an angle of 38.7 degrees and so what we do here is we take 100 divided by 64 and we get 1.56 that will be 1.56 amps and the phase angle would be this angle minus this angle when you subtract, or I'm sorry, when you divide an angle, then you subtract it from the number at the top, so it would be a minus 38.7 degrees. And so that would be the current at that phase. Now let me write that down on the phase angle here. Uh, so on our diagram right here, so here we had the impedance of the inductor, the resistance of the resistor, the, the, the reactance of the capacitor, and if we now draw the Voltage, I'm not the volt, but the current on this diagram, it would be at minus 38 degrees. So let's write like that. So the I here is equal to 1.56 amps at an angle, phase angle of minus 38.7 degrees. So that gives you a feel of where the uh, current is in phase with respect to everything else. So now we're going to find the voltage across each of the three components. We want to find the voltage across the inductor, the voltage across the a resistor and the voltage across the capacitor. And remember from Ohm's law we can take this equation and we can say that therefore the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. Well in this case since we have impedance at a resistance we can say that the voltage is equal to the current times the impedance. So we're going to do that for each of the three currents. So um, or each of the three components I should say not currents because the current is the same all the way through the circuit. So we have the voltage across the inductor is equal to the current of the circuit times the impedance of the inductor. So in this case, that would be the current, which is 1.56 amps with the phase angle of minus 38.7 degrees. And we're going to multiply that times the impedance of the inductor. And notice we put it in this form right up here. So it's going to be 51 ohms with the phase angle of 78.7 degrees. And so all we have to do now is multiply these two values together. So we have 1.56 multiplied times 51, and we get mm, close enough to 80 volts with a phase angle of, and since we're multiplying, we simply have to add those two together. So 78.7 minus 38.7. Wow, that's a nice one. So we have 40. That's exactly 40 degrees. Because 40 plus this gives us 78.7. Wow, nice. Next one. V sub C is equal to I times Z sub C, which is equal to, again, the same current, 1.56 amps, with the phase angle of minus 38.7 degrees. 
and multiply that times the impedance of the capacitor, which is right here. So it would simply be uh, 10 ohms with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. Because here we don't have a resistance in that branch, so we simply take this right here. You notice the phase angle of minus 90 degrees with an amplitude of 10 ohms. So that's the impedance of that. So this is equal to 15.6 volts. And the phase angle here would be minus 38, minus 90. That would be minus 128.7, minus 128.7 degrees. And finally, the uh, voltage across the resistor is equal to I times the impedance of the resistor, of course. The impedance of the resistor is the same as the resistance of the resistor. So this is 1.56 amps with a phase angle of minus 38.7 degrees. Oh, something is wrong here. All right, there we go. Got a little bad spot on the board. And of course, we multiply times the resistance, which is, I think we said 40 ohms, 40 ohms. And that has a phase angle of zero degrees because it's in phase with the voltage source. And so that becomes, see here, 1.56 times 40, 62.4 volts with a phase angle of minus 38.7 degrees. That's an eight here, didn't come out quite right. All right, one more thing we should be able to do is the power consumed by the, uh, by the circuit here. And so to do that, we actually, it's very straightforward. We take the power is equal to I squared R. So the magnitude of the current squared times the resistance only. So we don't want the reactance because the reactance doesn't uh, consume any power. It just stores energy and releases energy constantly back and forth. It's only the resistance that consumes the power. So we need to take the current squared. So here's the current, 1.56 amps. We have to square that, and then we multiply times the total resistance of this uh, circuit, and the total resistance is right here. It's a total of 50 ohms. It's the 40 ohms of the resistor and the 10 ohms of resistance in the inductor. And so that would be times 50. And so what do we get here? We multiply that out. So we get 1.56, we square that, times 50 equals, and so we have 121.7 watts. We'll just call it 122 watts. So that's the power consumed by the circuit, by both the resistor and the resistance of the inductor right there. That's how you do that. That's how you solve a series circuit with impedance in the circuit. And on our next example, we'll try to go ahead and solve a parallel circuit. We'll have a couple examples for you for that because it's a little more complicated. So how to solve for the current and the voltage drops across every component or every branch in a parallel circuit with impedance. So that will be the next video.